Hi all, hope you all are doing good. Today's topic is renewable energy. In Canadian markets, financials and energy sector are two big players. In energy sector, the movement towards renewable energy is inevitable. Government policies, need for green energy, reduction of carbon emission, these are some of the driving forces that moves peoples and company towards renewable energy market. Even old energy companies are moving towards renewables. This month, I was planning to add some renewable energy stocks into my portfolio. So for that, I went through six major players in Canadian market. In this video, I will go through the process by which I selected those companies that I feel suits my investment risk and comfortability. Algonquin Power and Utility Corp is a growing renewable energy and utility company in North America. They have two subsidiaries, Liberty Power and Liberty Utilities. Liberty Power acquires and operates hydroelectric, wind, thermal and solar power facilities. Whereas Liberty Utility operates the utility distribution business of water, electricity and natural gas. They have a strong investor returns and have a 3 gigawatts renewable in operation and under construction. They also have a very good dividend payout as well as has a strong growth program. They have a market cap of around 11.9 billion with a PE ratio of 24.7 and a dividend yield of 3.94 percentage. Unfortunately, I was not able to find the year end 2020 balance sheet for Alconquin. So I got hold of the quarter 3 balance sheet and I'm comparing it with the 2019 year end uh, balance sheet. So a couple of points that we can look here is about the current assets and the total assets. So the current assets has considerably increased even though we are just comparing the quarter 3 with the annual of 2019 which shows that the company is doing good. On the other side, from a liability perspective, yes, the total liability for 2020 is higher than how it was in 2019. But I want to focus mainly on the current liabilities, which shows that they, it is less than how it was in 2019. If the current asset is more than current liability, then that means the company is doing good. Even though the operating cash flow is not as good as how it was last year, they have this year they have considerably reduced their long term debt as well as long term liabilities. So that also shows that the company is moving in a very good direction. Also from investing activities, um, they have been putting money, considerable amount of money into the business. So compared to last year, almost like 100 million um, dollars they have invested into the company. Also, if you look at um, the cash or the cash equivalent at the beginning of the period and at the end of the period, um, there is a considerable um, profit. So that is also a very good sign to show that they, the fundamentals of this company is strong and the balance sheet looks really good for us from an investor perspective. The next company is Brookfield Renewable Partners. They operate one of the world's largest publicly traded renewable power platforms. They have a huge market cap of 14.7 billion and have presence in North America, South America, Europe and Asia. The company is a global leader in hydroelectric power which comprises approximately 66% of its portfolio. They are also invested in wind, solar, distributor generation and storage facilities. As per their website, their investment objective is to deliver a long-term annualized total returns of 12 to 15 percentage. Along with that, they are also targeting a 5 to 9 percentage annual growth in dividends. Now, looking at how the company is performing, uh, if you look at the balance sheet, um, the total assets has been growing continuously when you see, compare it with year after year, um, and it is always more than the total liabilities. However, there are two rows that I'm highlighted here, which is um, of keen interest to me, which is the total current assets and total current liabilities. So even though the total current assets has been improved compared to 2019, um, the total current liability has exponentially increased and the current depth has also been increased. So 
if you compare the total current assets and total current liability the liability is more than the asset so that is something that i am always a little worried about when i'm looking at a company so if you look at the cash flow 2019 or 2018 they recorded a positive income whereas 2020 it is a loss and it is a considerable amount of loss in 2020 also when you look at the investment the company has started investing in itself like heavily this year and their invest investments or other investments or acquisitions were also doing good because they have uh, the sales and maturity of the investment is actually giving them a um, considerable amount in their cash flow statement in 2020 there um, they did have a positive net change in cash uh, whereas in two, this last three months it was showing as a negative amount and that mainly seems to be because of the debt repayment that they did um, so even though this is a big company uh, it has got a huge market cap um, I am a little skeptical about um, uh, Brookfields uh, the reason is uh, mainly because of the cash flow and the balance sheet and uh, the PE ratios that I see for this company um, so I before investing for me um, I had to read a little bit more on this company um, so right now I'm parking this company on the sidelines the next company that we are looking here is Boralex Boralex is a Quebec based uh, company a Canadian company for almost 30 years uh, but right now it have uh, its horizons established in United States as well as France they are um, continuously growing company uh, they have uh, expertise in wind solar hydroelectric and thermal just like all other companies that we have seen today they have around 2500 megawatts of highly diversified production capacity from an investment perspective uh, Boralex offers growth dividend returns and a long-term value they have a well-defined strategic plan and financial objectives uh, the four strategic orientation is growth diversification customer base and optimization along with it they also have three financial objectives growth in discretionary flows um, discretionary cash flow is the money left over once all capital projects have been funded and required payments such as wages have been made then target dividend payout ratio and growth in installed capacity looking at the balance sheet of Boralex it shows a positive sign the total current assets is more than the current liabilities and uh, even if you compare it with previous years you can see that in 2018 and 2017 the current liabilities were more than the current assets but from 2019 onwards the current assets starts growing compared to current liabilities so the total stockholders equity is also in positive and they do have good amount of assets compared to the total liabilities the total net cash provided from the operating activities is increasing year after the year um, and uh, in 2020 they have considerable growth compared to 2019 even the net change in cash like 2019 it was a negative it was a loss but in 2020 they have changed it back to a positive number the next company is Energex Inc Energex is an independent renewable power producer that develops acquires owns and operate hydroelectric facilities wind farms solar farms and energy storage facilities they have a gross installed capacity of around 3700 megawatts of renewable energy uh, they mainly operates in Canada around 52.9 percentage of their megawatts is in from Canada um, the United States has got 31.6 percentage of megawatts uh, whereas they have presence in France and Chile from an investor perspective to reduce risk and improve performance stability they have built a geographically diversified portfolio of high quality and long lasting assets within the hydro wind and solar energy sectors they have formed a strategic alliance with hydro quebec uh, the alliance will target specific strategic invents investment for the mutual benefits 
uh, HydroQuebec is a public utility that manages the generation, transmission, and distribution of electricity in Quebec, as well as export of power to portions of the northeast of the United States. With this strategic planning, they did acquisition of Salvador Solar Facility in Chile and mountain air wind farms in Idaho. Uh, they are also slowly expanding to Europe. By looking at their income statement, we can see that um, they have reduced their uh, net loss uh, compared to 2019. However, uh, their balance sheet um, does not um, reflect a positive sign. Uh, the total current assets has increased with, compared to 2019. However, um, the current liability has uh, increased like double fold. So, uh, and uh, the total current liability is more than um, the total current assets, which for me is always a concerning factor. They have the total assets more than the total liabilities. And as a result, they do have a positive uh, total shareholders equity. 2020, they have um, around uh, 300 million more of uh, uh, current debt uh, compared to how it was in 2019. Even on the cash flow, when you compare with 2019 and 2020, uh, so the 2019, they had around like 76 million of uh, uh, net change in cash, whereas 2020, it just became 5 million. So um so that is a a bit of a concern from an investor perspective um hopefully there is more to it uh, but um from whatever data point that i'm looking at it um this does the the, the numbers doesn't um, uh, help me in making a judgment to invest in this stock the next company is the northland power um this is a power producer like dedicated in building owning and developing clean and green global power infrastructure. They do have assets in Asia, Europe, Latin America, and North America. Um, they produce electricity from burning clean natural gas, as well as from re renewable resources such as wind, solar. They have an operating facilities that um, generate around 2,600 megawatts of electricity. And they also have um, facilities that are under construction, which can uh, produce an additional 130 megawatts of power. In the beginning of uh, 2020, they have announced the acquisition of EBSA, which is a regulated uh, utility in Colombia. So that would help them uh, to grow in Latin America. Um, along with that, they have also successfully secured a grid alloc allocation of offshore wind in Taiwan, um, secured additional um, early stage opportunities in Japan and South Korea. So which shows that they are slowly um, becoming a global player. Again, uh, we, we will look at the two financial papers, the balance sheet and the cash flow. Um, so the balance sheet shows that the total current assets is a little bit better than uh, the total current liability. Uh, however, when compared to previous year, the 2019, it's a little less. Um, so the company has not done that much in 2020. And looking at the cash flow statement, um, uh, we can see that the net income is um, uh, increased compared to how it was in 2019. So uh, we could probably see a growth in next year's balance sheet as well as the cash flow because of those acquisitions that they made. So um, from a growth perspective, it seems to be that um, there would be a better growth in 2021 for NPI. Uh, the last company that we are looking here is uh, TransAlta Renewables. They are a subsidiary of TransAlta company. Um, they are like, highly diversified. They do have around like 40 plus facilities across uh, multiple regions, um, very, spanning various technologies. Um, they do operate in, um, they do have assets in wind, natural gas, hydro, solar, battery, um, in all the sectors. Um, they have a huge market cap of around 5.5 billion. Um, they do give a great dividend of around like 4.6 percentage. From a uh, geographical uh, diversification perspective, they do have presence in other countries. Um, one of them, key point is like they do have um, 
a presence in Western Australia where they have exclusive rights to supply electricity to BHP's mining operations um, in the gold field region of Western Australia. In December 2020, they also announced that they have ended into definite agreements for acquisitions of three assets from Trans Alta Corporation. Um, in 2020, they have did a little bit more acquisitions. So looking at the balance sheet of Transalta, we can uh, straight away see that the current assets is like um, the, almost double that of the total current liabilities they have. So that is a um, very good sign. And even comparing with 2019 to 2020, uh, they have exponentially increased their uh, total current assets. Even when you look at the cash flow, we can see that the cash or the cash equivalence of uh, beginning of the year was the 63 million but the end of the year it turned out to be 582 million so um, that shows that the company is really doing good so uh, now since we have, we have seen an overview of all these six stocks now let's compare um, so first a data point that I'm comparing is uh, return on equity a return on equity is a measurement of the profitability of a business in relationship to its equity so if we put that on a chart, we can um, see um, how each company performed. Um, Algonquin, as I mentioned earlier, I don't have the full data for the 2020. So only the quarter three results has been used here. And that may be the reason why the 2020 is a little bit down than 2019. And I believe that if we had the entire 2020 data, it could have surpassed uh, the results of uh, our equity percentage of 2019. Brookfield. Brookfield is in a downward trend like 2018 they were like 0.05 um, oh sorry 0.5 percentage of uh, return on equity whereas um, right now it's at uh, minus 3.58 uh, BLX BLX is is actually doing good so if you see like in 2018 and 2019 they were negative but they are growing so 2018 was minus 4.63 2019 was minus 4.51 and today or 2020 it's 5.95 so that is a sign of a good growing stock um energex on the other hand um, um, it was good in 2018 but there was a dip in 2019 but 2020 it recovered well um so it is Recovering in 2021, probably we could see a positive uh, uh, ROE on uh, Energex. Uh, and PI, so they have uh, the highest return on equity of and all the other stocks here. Um, but um, it's not consistent growth. We have an up and a down kind of scenario here. Uh, but still, it is, it is really good. The, the numbers are really good. Um, the next one is like Transalta and if you see Transalta is like kind of um, opposite to how BLX was like BLX was like low and then it started improving but Transalta it was like high in 2018 but it's slowly going down so we don't know how it would be in 2021. The PB ratio is like a price of the share when compared to its book value so a high PB value means that it is overpriced. So based on that concept here, like if you look at um, NPI, it has got a very high PB value, uh, whereas Algonquin and Transalta Canada um, has got a comparatively better PB value. The next data point is like current assets divided by current liability. So here, like uh, anything uh, below one means that the uh, liability is like more than the asset. So based on that, like you can see that Brookfields and Energex has got um, the value less uh, less than one, uh, whereas Transanta, as we saw earlier, like has got a very high uh, current assets and uh, uh, current liability ratio. Last but not the least, uh, uh, the dividend chart. So we can see from here that Transalta Renewables has got a very high dividend of around 5.1 percentage, followed by Algonkin. Power, uh, which is around four. Um, Energex has got around three point three percentage. Northland Power and Transalta gives you a monthly dividend. 
So if you are looking for a stock that gives a monthly dividend rather than a quarterly dividend, then these two stocks you can consider. Um, so based on all this analysis that I did, um, and as I told earlier, it's based on your individual uh, comfort level. Um, I have bought um, Algonquin and Transalta Renewables into my portfolio. Um, I'm also keenly interested in Northland Power, uh, but because the stock price was a little bit high compared to the other two, I kept it to, um, to buy it for some other day, probably. So that's pretty much from my side. Uh, one quick thing I want to sh uh, say here is that um, um, I have, um, just like most of you guys, I have, I'm keen, I always look into other people's analysis. Um, and I found that a lot of people has recommended uh, uh, BEP, that is a Brookfield, as one of the good stock. But however, in my analysis, um, I'm not able to find the results that can back it up. So I would really appreciate if you guys can give me a feedback on um, on the data points that I'm using here. Is that correct? Or uh, why would you think that BEP is a, is, a, is a really good stock? What am I missing here? So please do let me know. Um, so till then, um, stay safe. Bye.